Hello and welcome to my presentation. I'm Mohammed Bajalani from KN2C University of Technology. I'm in the second semester of Master of Science in Mechatronic Engineering. Today I'm going to talk about an interesting topic entitled Implementation of a Novel Intelligent Controller on a Cable-Driven Parallel Robots. First of all, let me have a quick review of a serial and parallel manipulator. In this part, I want to talk about the positive features of cable-driven robots and why we use them from a practical point of view. Then, simulation and control design will be presented. Result will be shown in the next part and finally, the conclusion and future works will be discussed. Before starting, let us take a look at these so beautiful pictures. What do you think about the best way to create them? What is the optimal solution? At the first step, we can suggest using painters to create them. But if we consider the problem in terms of cost, times, dangers, and risk, it will be so different. In, uh, from my point of view, using robots is one of the best and interesting ways to create such beautiful pictures. But what type of robot is exactly suitable for this problem? Notice that a large work space with respect to high acceleration and velocity and reasonable precision is, uh, are needed in this task. Uh, to answer this question, it is helpful to have a quick review of serial and parallel manipulator and cable driven robots. In this slide, I want to compare three types of robot, serial manipulator, parallel, and cable-driven robot. Actually, cable-driven parallel robot, or CDPR, is one of the special type of parallel robots, and we just use the cable as a link in this type. So serial and parallel are two main classes. And in the first one, I'm in serial one, I have a... Uh, we have an open kinematic chain. The links and joints are located after each other res uh, respectively. However, in some design, they put uh, motors and actuators on the ground and transfer power and torque to the joint by uh, parallel ground links. Usually, actuators, but usually actuators are located on the joint. By this way, the weight of the robot will be increased. It is clear that. In this design, the precision and speed are so low. But if uh, uh, but if we want to talk about the advantages, we have to say that a large workspace and low cost in maintenance are the are these significant positive features of this type. Due to the closed loop kinematic uh, chain in parallel robots, there are a lot of different features relative to serial ones. On the one side. The advantages of the parallel robots are high precision, high velocity and acceleration, and more important one is high payload to weight ratio and simpleness in inverse kinematic equation. But on the other side, there is very complex workspace and also limited. The cost of repairing and maintenance are so high and sometimes there is no straight way to drive a forward kinematic equations, but uh, Oh, what about the third one, cable-driven robots? Uh, the cable-driven robot have extensively played well in tasks that require large work space by, replace, by replacing rigid links with cables. Uh, some drawbacks of conventional serial and parallel robots are remedied. At the next slide, uh, the details of cable-driven robots will be discussed more. The cable suspended camera system, as you can see in the right, cable a robot simulator, mobile cable driven robots, cable driven robot leg, and many other applications are the sign of the cable's robot significant roles. Although cables cause the large work space and many a specific positive feature, only the tensile force is accessible. As a consequence, Positive force is one of the most important restrictions in control scheme. By this way, common control approaches which developed in serial and parallel manipulator are not workable in cable-driven robots and need to modify it. That's why control of cable robots is more challenging. 
fully constrained and under constrained are two main classes of CDPRs. Usually in the second one, the gravity force is used for maintaining cables under tension. Applying a passive force such as gravity limits us at low speed. In the fully constrained type, one or more actuators are accessible in comparison to the number of degree of freedom. Using redundancy in the actuators, the kinematic and dynamic characteristics are improved. The experimental study of this presentation is uh, of one of the fully constrained type of CDPRs. If we want to sum up the problems quickly, we have to say that considering the wide task space, high speed and acceleration, and low maintenance cost in wall paintings, cable-driven parallel robots seem the only robotics suitable for this problem. Due to the fact of positive force, nonlinearity, and the lack of knowledge of the mathematical model in the cables, it needs to get system controlled by different methods which enable us to distribute first in a proper way. Cable-driven robots consist of some preliminary parts such as pulley, cable, motors, drum, and uh, end effector. In this slide, we want to uh, give the definition of uh, the parts of CDPR. A pulley or especially guide pulley is responsible to change the direction of the cable. For example, if you want to apply the force in the horizontal axis and want to move the payload on the vertical axis, you can use a guide pulley to change the direction of the cable and move your payload. Drum or a cable drum is a round object or cylindrical object uh, which is responsible to carry extra cables and uh, in other words, extra cables can be wrapped by a drum. AC motor or any other actuator is a component of a machine that can uh, apply torque or force to the robots. Uh, in our system, we, uh, we have used AC motor to produce torques on drones. Cables, uh, uh, we can interpret cables as a set of wires which is covered by plastic. In our study, we use a stainless steel cable uh, in our robots. We developed in ARIS group some types of uh, cable-driven robots, but in this presentation, I want to introduce two types of planar cable-driven robots, such as Camel Mug 1 and Camel Mug 2. Camel Mug is one of the famous painters in our country. In the first version, we use a suspend structure, as you can see in this uh, video. However, it is able to create uh, professional, interesting pictures. But uh, because of the suspended structure, as, as we discussed earlier, it is not able to reach a very high speed and acceleration. Uh, so we modified this version to the second version as a fully constrained robot named Camel Mulch 2. As you can see in the picture, we have three different kinematic chains. The green one, the red one, and the blue one. Uh, you can see the colors on the cable. We have eight cables with three actuators. Actually, in this structure, which is provided by Isaac Hosseini and Nasrullah Qadadadi, I have to say that the design uh, of the end effector has been done in a way to lock the end effector to have a rotation. So, there are only transitional axes along X and Y. Three actuators, eight cables, and just two transitional degrees of freedom cause a redundant robot, which enables us to have a very high speed and uh, acceleration. If you want to read more detail about this robot, you can find papers in the link below. Alright, uh, in this part, uh, we are going to simulate a uh, Camel Mulk 2 structure in Simescape simulation environment. First of all, we need to notice uh, that the cable part of Sim Mechanic is not yet, uh, it uh, seems not yet completely completed. And you have to observe the tension of the cables that they po stay positive along the simulation. I think it, uh, it cannot support uh, flexible cables, I think. 
All right. Uh, task space and cable lens coordinate are two types of motion control in CDPRs. On the one side, designing a controller in a task space requires expensive hardware to measure the precise position of the end effector. On the other side, from a practical point of view, cable lens enables us to have an economical design. Both of them had advantages and disadvantages. But designing a controller in cable lens coordinate causes a much simpler design and easy implementation. However, the lens of the cables can be measured by encoders regarding the elasticity in cables. It may be not reliable much as measuring the pose of the end effector. For this simulation, we have three main parts. As you can see in the picture, we have a very simple structure of control. We use the inverse kinematic to map the desired trajectory in the task space to the joint space. So we only control the angle of the motors or drums in this study. And it's, um, and it's clear that we have to feedback theta or angle of the joint as output from the plan and we can compare them and produce a control signal as the tau or torque of the motors. I do not want to bother you with the details of the simulation and make a tutorial video, but generally speaking, we can divide the robot into two different parts in SimScape. The end effector and the fixed frame, they have been related to each other with cables and pulleys. In other words, some pulleys have been attached to a fixed frame and rest of them attached to the end effector. Finally, the end effector and the fixed frame related to the each other with a planner joint and uh, cables. As you can see in the animation, we define a desired trajectory for the joints and the end effector pretty moves uh, on the desired trajectory in task space. In other words, we do not provide tau from a controller in this part. And it's just uh, defining a motion for the robot to simulate and find the issues in the simulation. In other words, tau is calculated uh, automatically. At the next part, we apply the controller to set the control effort. Brain emotional learning is one of the bio-inspired algorithms which mimics limbic system in mammals' brain. However, there's a lot of complex and various subsystems in real limbic system, but Bell algorithm gets help from uh, four main parts such as thalamus, sensory cortex, orbitofrontal cortex, and amygdala. I don't want to go to the details of this algorithm, but let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one of the most significant advantages of this algorithm is that it's model free. As you can see, uh, we do not need any specific information about the model of the system. Uh, low computational cost is another specific property of Bell, and I think it is the best uh, one characteristic which has enabled us to implement it in on uh, affordable microcontroller. As you can see in the picture, the learning laws uh, of the algorithm is very simple and it can easily implement in, a, in any devices. Actually, in this study, we define uh, reward and sensor inputs in a way to uh, remain cables in positive first. Uh, for the first time, a uh, Bell algorithm was introduced by Morin and after a while it's used as a controller in dynamic system. Uh, after that, it's used in a lot of controls such as re-entry system, uh, stepper motor, trajectory tracking, motion control of Omni, uh, omnidirectional robots, attitude control of quadrotor, and electrohydraulic servo system. As you can see in this slide, the desired trajectory is defined in the task space like a simple circle. But if you plot x and y relative to time, you can see another plot. This trajectory has been mapped by inverse kinematic to joint space. By this way, you can see the result of simulation in the joint space and task space in the middle column. How pretty well uh, uh, 
pelvic can follow the desired trajectory without any need to Jacobian matrix in the null space. And uh, the right uh, figure shows that the controller forward of the controller. In the next slide, I want to show the implementation result of this controller in our experimental setup. As you can see in the video, how pretty controller can follow the desired trajectory regarding the dynamics of cables that uh, we did not consider in simulation part. The uncertainty in parameter and other issues which are happen in implementation tasks have been eliminated by adaptation law. The desired trajectory in joint space and actual angle of the joints are shown in the first plot. As you can see, measured theta are relatively close to desired ones. In the second figure, you can see the control effort which is remained positive along uh, the simulation. But uh, there's a little chattering uh, on the signal. And finally, the third one is the error in task space, which is closely near to zero, and only there is uh, minus positive minus uh, two millimeter error. And finally, thanks for your attention.